Live from Portland, Oregon, it's time for A Different View with women's perspectives on the fight to end prohibition again with Portland Dispensaries examiner and mother of four, Jennifer Alexander, and professional health care provider, Iva Cunningham, from Alternative Medical Choices, Inc. Now, here's a different view. Uh, go ahead, Jennifer. Welcome to a different view. <laughs> I'm Jennifer, here with Iva. I had my microphone muted. I was trying to unmute it, and something popped up over it. That's okay. <laughs> How are you doing tonight? I'm doing great. I'm getting my medical alcohol on. Medical alcohol, really? I'm, I'm, We're I'm having a little Hoda. And myself, yeah. Having a Hoda and Kathy Lee moment out here. That's I guess right. you could say I'm having my medical coffee then, because. <laughs> yeah, um, I'm I'm uh, drinking a Hefe, and what are you drinking? Uh, oh. It's this wonderful Angry Orchard Apple Ginger Cider. It's super yummy. It it's ironic like it. that you guys should be drinking because I was just thinking seconds before the show started how I was going to be sitting here drinking my caffeine and smoking my nicotine while we talked about pot, you know, all of my addictions <laughs> all wrapped up in one. And uh, now you guys are drinking. We've covered all bases. That's right. We've hit, oh, well, we haven't hit heroin or smack. Or well, I bet all. Do your mildly legal basis i mean we're all legal to smoke pot in this state too so that's true man we are going to have a great show um i i'm pretty excited about what we've got lined up we're going to be um the oregonian had uh published an article uh the push to have leg le legislature legalize uh -huh. and a poll that came along with that um also uh drug policy alliance exit strategy for the failed drug war that is super exciting um, yes. I don't know have you have you got a chance to read it, but there's some great stuff in there. I can't wait to talk about that. Um, and then uh, California Senate ends um, uh, for profits and Washington U.S. Attorney cease and desist on farmers markets. And then we've got that robbery at that dispensary in southeast uh, Portland. We were going to talk a little bit about too uh, armed yeah, we'll robbery, and, and it's all on video. So yeah, we can talk a little bit about that. Kind of interesting. Um, you know, Oregon doesn't technically have dispensaries, but yet they're popping up. Left and right. I mean, we've got one down the street called We Got Your Hookup. We have dispensaries. Oh, we don't legally have dispensaries. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Jen. So we're going to take a quick break, and we'll get started with the show. You're listening to A Different View. We'll be right back. That's a token. Advertise the fact that your sack is out of poking. All the babies growing. Rain shining, snowing. Thousand watts, super metal, how lot glowing. Got the heady talk from the steady set of flowing. All the stimma crops ready, set, let's stone it. Because I'm mad again. The greatest threats to liberty has been the government taking people's liberty for things that people are in favor of. The Pew Research Group shows that 52% of Americans think marijuana should not be illegal. And yet there are people in jail, and your Justice Department's continuing to put people in jail for sale and use on occasion of marijuana. That's something the American public has finally caught up with. It was a cultural lag, and it's been an injustice for 40 years in this country to take people's liberty for something that was similar to alcohol. You have continued what is allowing the Mexican cartel's power and the power to make money, ruin Mexico, hurt our country by having a prohibition in the late 20th and 21st century. We saw it didn't work in this country in the 20s. We remedied it. This is the time to remedy this prohibition. And I would hope you would do. The law offices of Omar Figueroa would like to remind you to stand up for your rights. Please do not give up your precious liberties. There's nothing wrong with standing up for our constitutional rights. And in fact, it's the only way to honor the Constitution that recognizes our natural rights. Treat law enforcement with respect and respect the Constitution by standing up for your rights. If you are detained or arrested, stand up for your rights by repeating, I respectfully invoke all my legal and constitutional rights. I do not consent to any search and seizure. I want to remain silent, and I want to speak to my attorney, Omar Figueroa. Omar Figueroa has more than a decade of experience in federal and California courts and graduated from Yale University, Stanford Law School, and Trial Lawyers College. Please contact the law offices of Omar Figueroa at 415-489-0420 or 707-829-0215 or on the web at www.omarfigueroa.com And now we're back with 
a different view. Man, I really love that um, that little clip that you have of uh, Representative Steve Cohen from Tennessee. Oh yeah, he's uh, fantastic. That was him dressing down uh, Eric Holder in a hearing that really didn't have anything that much to do with the uh, drug war. But uh, yeah, he was talking to the Attorney General there. Just saying it like it is. I mean, that yeah, we we've traded our liberties for the drug war in Mexico. Exactly. And it's um, it's out of control. And I think and, you know, just the changing of tides and people recognize that. And speaking of that, lots of exciting stuff going on, huh, Jennifer? Yes, for sure. So we're going to start off tonight's show talking about the Oregonian, which has for for the second time. Well, I guess third time, if you count the fact that they wrote two articles just the other day, <laughs> supporting legalization. They're um, they're basically saying that the legislature needs to get their act together and and put out the language to legalize that the um, that that in 2014 something's going to pass. Whatever makes it to the ballot is going to pass. The right. polls are showing this. Uh, the recent poll, which I'm going to post to our Facebook page in one second, shows 64 percent favor um, taxing, regulating, and legalizing marijuana for adults. Mm -hmm. 55% support one of the specific languages that, that's being proposed by activists. That being said, if it makes it to the ballot, they're expecting it to pass, you know, the Oregonian, the media in general. And what they're saying is that the legislature should put something out there more responsible and more well thought out than what they believe activists will put out there. Mm -hmm. And basically with the threat that if the legislature doesn't do it, that the activists, a.k.a. stoners, will. And well, I mean, to be pass. fair, look how so close this Octa... this is their chance to get it right. Octa almost passed. I, I mean, I, I think... I think that is a legitimate fear that a lot of people have. It's either we put something together and have a little bit of control of how it gets rolled out, or we let the voters do it. And, and you know, let's be... That frightens a lot of people. And I think that what, you know, this whole push to get it done is they're seeing the revenue go, of course. But with Okta being such a liberal law, the fear is if we let the voters decide what uh, what shape legalization is, it's going to be much broader and much looser than what they would, you know, the, what the, the uh, what the legislators would want. Did I lose you, Jennifer? Are we still having... I think I lost Jennifer. Oh, shoot. Anyway, um, I think, you know, I think that... As Can you go, hear me out there? Oh, Ivan. there you are. We lost you for a second. Sorry. We're still working out the bugs, keep it, people. Um, but yeah, Oregon is Oregon and many other states are really taking a, an honest look at legalization um, and trying to shape a new uh, a plan that they have some sort of control over rather than, um, uh, you know, leaving it to the, to the voters and have something like Octa roll out. Which, you know, for the rest of us, that, that was just, you know, heaven. We want, you know, Okta. Are you, did I lose her again? There you are. I can hear you now. I lost all my sound there for a minute, but can you hear me now? I can hear you now, Jennifer. I can hear you clearly now, too. So I have no idea what you were saying. I did see you speaking. <laughs> <laughs> too bad you can't relive. I was just talking about, you know, how, you know I think part of the fear and the, the pressure is that um, – uh, Okta, um, you know, is such a liberal law that lawmakers don't want, um, you know, something like that. So they figure they need to control how it gets rolled out, how it's shaped, rather than just let the public. Because at what, 57, 47 percent, excuse me, if it was 57, we'd be dancing in the streets. Um, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that'd be heaven. Um, but anyway, but, I, you know, this is going to be kind of the theme of the show tonight. Um, you, you know, as we talk about the uh, the. Uh, the, the focus is shifting from medical marijuana and much more onto legalization and what is that um, happening and, and or what is that going to look like and and, and um, there was another poll that came out uh, or that uh, Oregon statewide frequency Greenberg Quinlan Rosner research it, it, this was a different poll than the one that I'm looking at here I don't think so May 4th through the 9th Ah, Greenberg, Quindler. Yeah, you're yeah, right. Yeah. This this poll was put out by New Approach Oregon, which is um, a group of activists in Oregon trying to get the funding and the support behind a a 
better thought out measure is the, the-, the theory here. Basically, um, very similar to what we were proposing with ACTA here in Oregon for 2012. But taking into account, you know, personal limits on growing and possession and, and regulating hemp slightly differently so that it doesn't end up being the free-for-all that some of the opponents feared. Right. And I'm going to link this um, this poll onto our Facebook page here momentarily. I, my computer's a little choppy, so I don't want to mess it up by going to the Facebook page right this second. But, but during the breaks, public... I'm going to post uh, if I understand this the right, Oregonian. If I understand this right, they questioned 602 likely voters for 2014 right. and, and these are just some of the questions i'll just quickly go through a couple of the questions um um uh, first they ask if you're a registered voter obviously um let's see a question about barack obama i think it's just some general stuff where is it at where is that um uh, so question four was basically, uh, there will be an initiative on the ballot next November concerning marijuana law in Oregon. Let me read you a brief description of the initiative, and um, and, and like Jennifer will, will have that posted to our website um, or, or to the Facebook. But basically, it's about legalizing in um, uh, the possession and, and use of, of cannabis for 20, ages 20, 21 and older. Um, and right. then regulating licensing of marijuana businesses through uh, Oregon Liquor Control Commission. Um, and oh, go ahead. Uh, anyway, so uh, a definite vote for yes, likely voters thirty-seven, um, probable vote yes eighteen, leaning towards yes three, leaning towards no two, probably no six, definite no thirty-one. And so then they compare those totals. Total right. yes, fifty-seven percent to a total no of thirty-eight percent. I mean that that's huge. That's, that's phenomenal. That's huge. That is huge numbers, and it's almost twenty percent. And and it gets better with the next question, which is regardless of how you feel about this specific initiative, do you think marijuana should be taxed, regulated, and legalized for adults? Very simple, very very cut and dry. Mm, yeah. And we've got fifty one percent saying yes strongly. Right. Fifty one percent strongly say yes. Yeah. And it's sixty three percent to thirty four percent. Sixty three. Additional. Yes, yeah. 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 Exactly. We've got a majority that that agree strongly with that statement. That that's it, huge. It's going to happen. That's 30. It's almost 30 percent right there. That, I mean, the vote is this is it, it no longer. Is it a debate about whether you like stoners or you agree with pot or not? This is a debate now that's changing um, and swaying political. Uh, uh, it, it's it's becoming. What's the word I'm looking for? Mainstream, mainstream not mainstream. Um, <laughs> I buy, saying, it's becoming a, 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 a uh, oh crap I can't remember anyway it's becoming one of those votes that that uh, uh, people are really waking up to pay attention to and they're not so afraid to uh, make a statement about how they feel about it anymore where before well, and I've been afraid. saying since I was working with um, the Oregon Cannabis Tax Act you know from mm -hmm. 2010 through 2011 you know that whole time frame there um, that it's not anymore the question's not if we legalize marijuana it's, it's when. when it's how right. we're going to and what's to. it going to look like and what yeah. is it going to look like and, and 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 so the conversations are becoming really exciting but what you know what i i do find is that and we'll we'll um talk about this a little bit more in the next segment but um you know they're talking about what legalization would look like and what's really exciting is they're starting to come around to our arguments to how we've been discussing this is not working, there's a different approach that needs to happen, absence doesn't work, you know, they're starting to, to use our arguments and our debates and our facts to shape how, uh, how uh, you know, ending or, you know, the drug war, what it would look like, what the end of prohibition would look like. And, and you and I talked about this on an earlier episode, but the the but what about the children website yeah. where they pretty much said it's going to happen. Let's have a hand in how it happens. happens. Right. Let's and, shape it. And and I'm going to post this link to our website again um, too because while I don't agree with most of their talking points, and and these are some of the people that are are our fiercest opponents in, in many of these conversations. These are the things that they're looking at. I think a lot of times we don't realize that what we think is the big deal isn't. 
They're more concerned about how we're marketing to children mm -hmm. um, in, in the same way that Joe Camel wasn't necessarily right, marketed alcohol, directly too, at children, yeah. but it was a cartoon character that more appealed towards a younger market. Right. And, and mm -hmm. they're, they're afraid of that sort of a, a trend appearing in marijuana. Mm -hmm. And things about, you know, enforcement, how are we going to enforce not selling to kids, things like this. Um, it's not, oh, we don't want stoned people anywhere ever. It's we already know we've got it. We know that, you know, it's going to be legal. How do we protect our children from mm -hmm. the wild, wild west mentality? Well, how do we and prevent the unintended consequences that we've created you know, by trying to follow these very strict drug policies. And I and I think that's really where the argument is, is that we've been talking about, you know, a lot of unintended consequences, giving up several liberties, people being incarcer incarcerated, our prison population, more access to kids, and a, a blossoming and criminal uh, black market. These are the unintended consequences. And and I I think that the argument now is, is now taking a look at how do we craft legislation and legalization aware of those unintended consequences. And I think that this is a great segue into our next segment because we're going to talk a little bit about the Drug Policy Alliance. They yes. have put out an exit strategy on how to end the failed drug war. And I think this is our answer to the same sorts of concerns. So when we come back, we'll talk a little bit about that. You're listening to a different view. medical marijuana right for you? When you are stricken by an illness, injury, or disability, you deserve to live your life as free from pain and suffering as possible. Modern medical researchers have developed some amazing pharmaceutical drugs, but these may not be the best solution for you. At Alternative Medical Choices, we help collect your medical records history and provide a physician's review and examination to help you qualify for the use of medical marijuana in Oregon and Washington State. Call 971-270-0262 or visit altmedchoices.com for more information and to schedule an appointment today. Alternative Medical Choices, because you deserve the best in health care. break we talked about the exit strategy i think you've got some chocolate so i'll go for a minute <laughs> we were talking about the drug policy alliance uh their publication tonight. which is the exit strategy for the failed war on drugs and it's a federal legislative guide it, it's the 2013 issue i believe that they've put out some similar things before but this is very comprehensive oh yeah and I, I'm, I'm very impressed that I have not had a chance to read through all of I mean, it. So it's quite long. It's 64 pages long. It's very thorough in well, documenting. I think, I think that the, the, the important thing to mention, if you're just perusing through it, um, it is quite long, but it's, it's, um, it, it really is, it's, it's a nice doc. It gives me a lot of hope. Um, but the, just the, the, con, the table of contents, um, it highlights all their bullet points, which I think are really important. Um, they, they talk about broadening the federal policy changes declaring a moratorium on creating new drug crimes, um, increasing um, drug sentences or criminalizing more drugs. So kind of repealing some of that stuff. Um, gosh, there's, there's a ton of it. Um, let me see. Shift the focus of the federal drug budget from failed supply side programs to cost effective demand and harm reduction strategies. Uh, common sense. I, I think it's important, though, that, that in this, I mean, the, these first few points that you're highlighting, all fall under, you know, basically the conflicts between federal law and state law. Right. And then they, they go on to address civil rights, things like civil asset forfeiture, mm -hmm. things 
like um, confidential informants, the crack cocaine disparity um, compared to powder cocaine. Right. Then they have the deficit reduction, different ways that we can impact our economic situation, mm -hmm. enforcement, foreign policy, sentencing and reentry, talking about how we take people that have been convicted of a crime well, and allow them to reintegrate back into society, which is one of our weakest points. Exactly. And that was one of the things that I think gave me the most hope that they were coming around to some common sense policy is how they were going to increase tax incentives for people who would uh, hire people who have uh, a federal, um, uh, you know, who've been accused of, of a federal crime. Um, there was, you know, just kind of uh, trying to reintroduce people that have uh, served sentences back into the job force, so they're not re reoffending. But which um, has always stood out to me as one of the most ridiculous things. I mean, if I am a young person, you know, eighteen to twenty-five, mm -hmm. and and I get busted for selling marijuana. I, I go to jail, or maybe I don't. Maybe I only get probation because I'm lucky. But for the rest of my life, I have to check that little box that I'm not only right. a felon, but a drug felon. Well, you here's know, some things that I thought were this. just really great. It says repeal the mandatory minimum sentences, which is like hallelujah, yeah. Reform federal drug conspiracy laws. Okay, I don't think also people huge. know that conspiracy is just basically, uh, Jennifer sold me some pot. That's it. It, it can be more than it can be so much more than that. It could right, just be that you knew that I was a about, drug dealer, and therefore you're a conspiracy. Right, right, <laughs> to exactly. My crime. Exactly. Um, and then, or this that you one, came by once when when a drug deal took place. Or I mean, there's so many different ways that that we basically criminalize everybody. Conspiracy and is just like, hey, we got nothing else to stick to. You. I'll pull this one at you. Um, this is one I, I was really. Uh, we talk a lot about drug courts. And how the idea sounds great if it really were drug courts. But one of the things that they talked about sentencing and reentering is uh, reform drug courts and other treatment diversion programs. Yeah. If, maybe if we're not locking all these people up and forcing them into drug courts, people who have a real issue and truly want to be there and truly want the help that is offered have an opportunity. Yeah. And and I, stop filling the beds up of people who don't want to be there and aren't going to benefit from, you know, my tax dollars, quite frankly. I think the thing that stands out to me the most when I'm looking at this table of contents <laughs> is that um, a page and a half is focused on sentencing and reentry. Yeah. And a page and a half is focused on treatment and prevention. Mm -hmm. All of the changes to the laws are very minimal. The changes to the laws are very simplistic. It's just removing some of these obstructions, you know, uh, mm -hmm. mandatory minimum sentencing, these sorts of things. But really what we're trying to do as reformers, I think, is to rebuild these people who have been destroyed by the drug war. Well, and, yeah, and I think most people, you know, it, it's not a, it's not about whether we want the right to smoke. It's that we think that the drug war is worse, and and it has a much uh, larger impact to society in in such a negative way than the actual drug itself. Than if you needed, even if you were somebody so addicted to whatever drug it was that that you that completely debilitated you, I still don't think that person belongs in jail. Well, not unless they do something that actually creates a criminal right. situation. Right, and then we'll talk about that. But let me just read some of these uh, bullet points. Um, uh, restore access to Pell Grants for individuals currently or formerly incarcerated. <laughs> yeah, I mean, some of these are just like, thank you. We've been, we've been, you know, this has been our big complaint. Uh, eliminate discrimination against firearm owners who use marijuana or other drugs. Um, allow expungement of drug convictions. How many people will that just unburden? That one Absolutely. thing. I, I mean, the list goes on and on and on. It's really a, a great read. It's it's exciting. We're not there yet, but I I mean when I'm when I'm reading through this list, I I, I mean I just think enhance elderly prisoner um, early release programs. Why should you spend the rest of your life in jail for selling a little bit of weed. Um, expand time credits for good behavior. I mean, the list goes on and on and on. It's really, um, the, you know, like you said, they spend a great deal of time talking about treatment and prevention, but they're taking a realistic approach to it. And, and I think, yes. you know, we have been complaining not only about how the cost is to, to arrest all these people and hold them, incarcerate them, put them through the prison system, 
and then to have them to reoffend again and to go back in there and to uh, and to go back into the system over and over again. But as a taxpayer, I want my dollar spent wisely, and I cannot even if I didn't smoke pot or consume alcohol or anything I can't see that this system that we currently have in place the drug war is a good use of my tax dollars so just from a financial perspective it's a huge waste of 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 my tax dollars and I'm offended by that but when when I'm reading through this this stuff this is something I would gladly spend my tax dollars toward to live Absolutely. in yeah i mean to support to offer treatment to people and even if you tax the crap out of my marijuana as long as it went to support some of these programs i'm all for it and i i just i really like that that the conversation is evolving i mean we've spent years and years really uh trying to convince people broadly that mm-hmm. these laws need to be changed that we need to reconsider how we're looking at this and i think for a lot of people it it they needed more information than that. They needed to know well, what and, that actually and, meant. No, and, and now we're telling them. We're telling right. them it could mean this, it could mean this, this and, and you have your options. Right, but this is also a compilation. I'm looking at this. This is a compilation of all the arguments that we have had over the years of why the drug war, war has failed. And this is our counter in argument, I think. I mean, I, I, I think I've, I've, I've heard Russ, Russ has built a show about every single one of these things. All, all these bullet points are, 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 are facts and, and uh, debates that we have been having against opponents or, or, or proponents of the drug war as, as this is a better solution. This one has yes. less harm to society. Why are we doing it this way? It's a huge cost to our um, uh, to our economy. It's a huge cost to our, uh, you know, social. Uh, 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 sorry, what's huh? Welfare. Welfare, but not so, uh, uh, more. Um, Morality. I like, morality. I like not thesaur- morality. I feel like I'm just like. I'm a thesaurus over here. You are. Well, it's the beer and the, <laughs> and the, the marijuana. Beer, you? Don't do marijuana. dabs and alcohol. Um, okay. <laughs> So, <laughs> so anyway, no. I, so, so to, to to kind of get back on track, though, I think that the really important thing about this for opponents to reforming our marijuana Morale. laws is that it does take into account things like um, that, that it that they want like the federal government to limit uh, their participation in any sort of drug policy mm-hmm. to to violent behavior. You know, like right. these. these when you have, like, say, drug cartels from other countries. Well, you know what, Jennifer? Here's the thing: is that the government has been asking the people to streamline our wallets for a long time, and that's what I think that they've kind of taken approach here: is let's streamline our wallets. The criminal justice system is fat with waste and abuse, and and this seems like a better way to take people out of the system and streamline the process. So like you just said, that the more violent criminals are actually locked up. And, and that's what I, gonna, I, I found the exact quote. It's in the broad policy, federal policy change. It's prioritized federal law enforcement resources towards violent traffickers mm-hmm. and major crime syndicates and leave low level offenders to the states. If the federal government would just take that step, mm-hmm. that would be so enormous to changing the dynamics of what is currently happening under the guise of the drug war. Just that one detail. And, and, so this kind of highlights that we're not saying, oh, anybody should be able to do anything that they want if it involves marijuana because, hey, marijuana's fine. That's not the case. It's that it shouldn't be bad simply because it's associated with marijuana. Hmm. That's what we're saying. And that's a different argument. And, and I think that when a lot of the opponents realize that, then they're a lot more supportive because we're not saying let the drug cartels run wild. We're not saying Colombian drug lords should be able to come in and sell on the front steps of Walmart. You know what I mean? Like that's, right. that's so not what we're saying. That's not what though. we want. That's not even what right. we want. I, I have to tell you, I just found something in here that kind of like I went, huh? It says repeal the federal syringe funding ban. Now, I don't know much about that program, Um but if anybody does, I'd love to hear them chime in on our, our Facebook. Uh, um, I only knew a little bit about that program, but there is a, there's been a lot of pushes throughout the years, and it's from the same people that we're fighting against with marijuana to say that these harm reduction strategies, such as providing clean syringes, mm-hmm. are enabling drug users, and therefore they've fought to eliminate any sort of federal funding towards anybody that is seen as enabling drug users. If you what about the methadone clinics? 
I, all of these things, a lot of them become, I, I mean, I don't know for sure exactly what the funding guidelines are for these, so don't, don't get me wrong, but mm -hmm. as I understand it, almost all of those locations are privately funded. Hmm. So uh, that, that's, that's one of those huge obstacles to access. It, it does say this, though. I think this is interesting. It says repeal the, the syringe funding plant ban, and then underneath it, it says encourage and allow for the establishment of supervised injection facilities. So we're taking, basically, we're taking the crack houses and we're shutting them down and we're bringing them into the medical <laughs> Well, they, they and, and Portland, you know, where, where we're all from here, they they have locations in downtown Portland and, and one could argue pros and cons of them. I mean, it, it, anytime you're dealing with drug users, there's going to be pros and cons. Sure. But, but the reality is that... The way that it's set up now, people can come and get fl fresh needles, but they're not allowed to use it there. So right. they go get high someplace else. And, and then they reuse they those needles. Now and those needles get left lying around in random hi hiding places right. because these people are high. They just well, shut up. They or, don't they, or they reuse a needle so they're just perpetuating the problem they're trying to prevent in the first place. If they're allowed a, a safe and clean place to use that needle mm -hmm. and everything is properly disposed of, yes, there's potential harm to that person, but they're not doing as much harm to society. And that's a perspective that a lot of drug reformers have fought for for years. But our current laws block that sort of perspective. Mm -hmm. All right. You're listening to Different View. We'll be right back. We're going to take a quick break. And uh, do some more Coda. Let it out, let it out. I just can't just get it out of my soul. Let it out, let it out. Here right now, ain't nobody gonna convince me that I'm wrong. What's happening, cool cats? This is Big Daddy, and I want you to cruise on over to the Funky Roller Rink. We'll be grooving all night long. Doors open at 11 Eastern, 8 Pacific, every Thursday night, right here on RadicalRust.com. Funky delicious. Good morning. So, schönen guten Morgen. And now we're back with 
a different view. Well, well, we got to talk about the exciting stuff, the, exci the uh, extra strategy. Can't wait for that to roll out. Um, now we're going to move on to, you know, not some, not some great news, but we had, you know, the dispensaries, the people who run the dispensaries, they really do risk a lot. Uh, you know, they risk their livelihood, of course. They risk their liberty and freedom, but they're also risking their lives. And, um, you know, we've had a few robberies here locally, uh, but this one was caught on uh, video. We've had some that were caught on video, but not quite as uh, clear as this one. Um, did you get a chance to see it, Jennifer? I did. I, I actually watched it a couple of times. I was surprised. It's, it's broad daylight. Mm -hmm. It's. I mean, it's sunny, it's shiny. They're on kind of a fairly busy intersection. Um, I've not been to this particular location, but I'm very familiar with that intersection. And bold, very, very, very bold. <laughs> um, they they held them up at gunpoint, or it was a guy, held them up at gunpoint and, and took a big, huge duffel bag full of marijuana. We've got the video, so I think we're going to play that now. And, and there's no bag. real sound to it, so we can keep talking while it's playing. Um, it, it's mostly just um, the visual of them being held up. Um, there we go. It does hey, seem to me up. that the person who uh, committed the crime, um, it, I, I got the impression that he was very comfortable in that in that environment. Like he'd been in there before. He kind of knew his way around. I, either either he's definitely been there before, or he is very. Um, experienced at robbing people because he seemed to do exactly what he's he was quite bold and yeah that's for sure he's really quite and, and i think what we've learned in, in medical marijuana is that a lot of times um, patients growers dispensaries um, you know even like farmers there's this sort of gray area that you find yourself in where you're unsure if the normal legal channels will protect you mm -hmm. and i think that a lot of people who are inside that industry kind of see some of those weaknesses and tend to take advantage. I, I I think that we've seen a few different times in the past. There was up in Washington, um, there was a robbery there a couple of years back on one of the, the dispensaries, and it was a couple of guys that used to work there, and they knew the weaknesses. Mm -hmm. They knew how to successfully pull it off because they knew the place like the back of their hand, you know. And I, I think um, the thing that really impresses me about this case is that in the Portland police response to this, which the video that we're watching is, is the police released this. Um, it's not, it's not directed in the way that we often see these things directed as mm -hmm. like these druggies were, you know, like creating crime by having marrow. It was instead directed at trying to catch this criminal who you can see right now on, on the screen, mm -hmm. he's got a gun to her head. Yeah. Um, while the other uh, volunteer or employee there is loading up this duffel bag full of jar after jar say, after jar. The first shot that's in the freeze frame, she's got her hands, he's hitting the floor, and she's got her hands on her waist. Like, she's just standing there in defiance. And he is pointing a gun at her. And, and she, her, you know, her body language is just saying, I don't believe you. Like, you've got to be kidding me. One note that was made on this uh, in the comments section from people in uh, Colorado mm -hmm. was the lack of regulations that we have where in, you know, in Colorado, there's a buzz in door, mm -hmm. there's another door, there's a required guard, security. There's required security, not just for the staff safety, but for the people who frequent that, that establishment. You right. Know, and that, this goes back to what I was just saying. I mean, uh, you know, all these weaknesses, if you frequent this place often enough, or if you've ever worked there, I mean, you're looking at it, this is just, it's just a storefront. It's just an office. Right. Right. Even liquor stores, everything's there. Even liquor stores have more security than this. I, I mean, what, you know, when I lived in Denver, Colorado, they're, you know, some of the, the, the clerks are behind bulletproof glass you now slip he's your carrying money that the... huge duffel bag right out broad daylight that just <laughs> it, it amazes me like i i don't see a car but they did identify a car with him so i presume he was parked in the parking lot somewhere there mm -hmm. but still i you know you really you kind of want 
people paying attention to your location. I mean, mm-hmm. if you saw somebody running out of a bank like that, people would notice, you know? Like, right, right. It's just kind of surprising to me that in broad daylight, he was able to walk out the door with that huge But you know what, bag. Jennifer, and I, do, I don't know. I, I, I really don't know. So I'm just guessing. But I would imagine that that's not necessarily an, in, uh, an infrequent visual. If you think about it, people bringing in their product to you know to hopefully re- regain some uh reimbursement on their costs for those for those for that material i i and that's possible and i suppose people probably aren't paying as much attention to mm-hmm. notice that it's usually going the other way big full bag goes in the door empty bag goes out the unless door it's the crap post. unless it's crap who knows who knows right I mean, unless but... they're leaving jars i mean i can i can see that as being something that somebody would like oh okay that's just that somebody who's you know a producer who's dropping off their stuff i i see that um you know, I, I don't know. I think. Um, but there's no security guard there. Well, there's that's no just it. There's no entry. security. There's and... nobody paying any attention anywhere. And this makes them very vulnerable. It makes the neighbors mm-hmm. vulnerable. This is why we need regulation. This is why we need to have those clear lines that say that it's Well, it, it, it's like I was saying earlier. Even liquor stores have more security. The reason why they have more security is because they have shit people want to steal. And, and, and you, ha- you know, even, even if I go into a convenience store, not only is there cameras, but there's sound. I know they have a panic button. I know that they've, you know, I know there's all kinds of things that are in place behind the cat, behind the, the, um, the cashier's station or whatever. There's a locked, uh, steel door where they can hide in if there's something like that. And, and the people don't know this, this is, I, I really, um, and, I, and I'm hoping that it's just what the police released, but I'm really kind of shocked that there is only this video. There's no audio whatsoever, you mm-hmm. know, and, and I'm hoping that maybe the video included audio and that just wasn't released. <laughs> but I, I think that, you know, having the voice to go with the um, the video helps identify a person, and mm-hmm. it appears that they're releasing that video trying to identify this person. So... I, I would encourage anybody who has a security system to take that into account that you kind of, you, you want, I, at least at the entryways and stuff, you know what I mean? Like where they're dealing, I don't know, they're, you should have, I think, better security, something more than just two people standing there and, and video with no sound. Well, and, and you know, to be fair, you know, Jennifer, that, that's, those kinds of things cost a lot of money. It's a great investment, but it's the one investment you really can't skip on when you're talking about serving uh, patients. When you're well, and there also about, is that say, sort of privacy issue, public, so right. I can see that there's, you know, things that need to be taken into account, but... It's just, I guess, kind well, of shocking. Well, I think I think most people understand that this that you know, uh, a weed on the black market is like gold, and <laughs> these people have a lot of it. Yeah, you know, and and, and I, I think so. Even when you know, I've I've gone into any of these places, which. Is that illegal to admit? I don't know. Anyway, um, <laughs> but you know, even as I, I've gone into these places, you know, if, if I don't feel safe. You know, it's my responsibility to take a look around. And I, I, you know, I tell people this. If you're going to frequent one of these places, make sure that you feel comfortable. Make sure that they, they're thinking about your exit strategy if something should go down. And and, I, and be aware of, you know, just be aware of the people that you're with. Because I mean, the temptation exists. I'm not saying that people, that everyone that's around is bad. I'm not trying to, you know... No, 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 but, but, but I, I, I would put it into that. perspective like this. If I'm going into the bank with a pocket full of cash, I want to know that a certain amount of security is there before I leave my cash with them right. or, or as I'm withdrawing it, walking mm-hmm. out. And, sure. you know, um, it, security at a bank is not wholly intrusive, but it is quite secure. And so that kind of shows you the sort of balance here. Well, I think and that I know people it's start... not wrong to expect that level of security when we're dealing right. with it. And, right. And, and in those certain situations, I think there are certain situations, you know, I, I know people will say, well, I don't want my, you know, it's people invading my privacy. I get that. But there are some things where your security and your privacy, I know that this is not a popular opinion, but... Um, Sometimes where your security is a little bit more important, especially when there's so many people willing to do so. I would hesitate to phrase it in that way. I know. I'm trying to. But I think there's a balance. I think there is a balance. balance. I think that we can 
take I'm not care saying of giving up all your liberties. I'm not me. saying that at all. I think what happens at TSA is BS. But <laughs> I, 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 I think that you, you, you know, there should be some assumed security for your safety or some concern for your safety, and at least taking the the steps to deter crime. So uh, it's time for us to take another quick break. When we come back, we're going to talk a little bit about what's going on with the California Senate and the Washington U.S. Attorney, a little bit of the, the pushback on all of these reform like successes. Hush, we're not going anywhere. Love them and leave them fast. Well, I guess I must be dumb. She had a pocket full of horses, Trojans and some of them you. But it was Saturday night. I guess that makes it all right. What have I got to do? Well, I say, get a red color, darling. Your much to confess. Get a red color. Hey, Lindsay. I wish you didn't smoke weed. You're not the same when you smoke. And I miss my friend. I'll be outside. Hey, this is Willie Nelson for Norman. And I smoke pot and I like it a lot. I learned a long time ago that marijuana is a lot safer than alcohol. There's nothing wrong with the responsible use of marijuana by adults. It's time we stopped arresting and started respecting those who smoke marijuana responsibly. To learn what you can do to help, contact Normal at NORML.org or call toll free 888-67-NORMAL. Why don't we all turn on together? Why don't we all turn on together? Why don't we all turn on together? And now we're back with a different view. Uh, yeah, you had the same comment. I, that, what the hell is that commercial, Russ? <laughs> That's uh, Live above the there influence. To catch us off guard or what? That was uh, that was one of the old nineteen uh, nineties anti drug above the influence commercials that we spent a couple billion dollars on, I think. And for me, you know, the most telling thing isn't that the dog is talking; it's that <laughs> the first thing the dog says is something about smoking pot. I mean, if the dog could talk, there's a whole bunch of other things it could have said, don't you think? <laughs> Joe well, Rogan. Joe Rogan's got a great routine on this. You know what? If your dog is talking to you in English, I don't think you're smoking. I don't At think you should be paying hot. attention. I think you should be checking yourself into a special hospital. I, <laughs> if your dog's lecturing you, you need help. You know what? My response is, you sniff butt. <laughs> don't tell me not to smoke pot. Don't tell me not to smoke but, 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 <laughs> butt. Sniffer. All righty then. <laughs> so as we're wrapping up the show, we just had a couple of, of stories to sort of, I mean, we, we don't want to forget where we've, where we've been, you know, for years and years and years, we've been fighting at our legislators, um, fighting at the United States Congress, you know, fighting at the media. And, and we're winning some of these battles now. We've got a couple of states with legal marijuana. We've got mm -hmm. media coming around and actually addressing this from a, a more responsible perspective, covering our position. <laughs> um, but but uh, the thing that we have to keep in mind is that we do still have opposition. And mm -hmm. so we've got the California Senate. You brought this to my attention, Iva, so you're probably a little more familiar with it than I am. But they're, they're trying to ban for-profit medical marijuana dispensaries. Right. So. They're basically saying that if you're going to be in the medical marijuana industry, it better not be for profit. And and that's it's always an interesting conversation to me because most people are under the false impression yeah. that um, nonprofits are not allowed to make a lot of money or pay their mm -hmm. employees a lot of money, and that's simply not the case. No, uh, a for profit. I mean, a non for profit could pay substantial salaries. People mm -hmm. could be getting rich off of this. That, that doesn't really mean anything. What it does mean, however, is that the profits roll back up into the um, the business itself and that it's dedicated to a specific mission. Right. And, and so 
I, I don't know that that has the impact that a lot of people believe that it does. <laughs> Right. I don't. It, it's just a different tax structure, and in some ways, a nonprofit has a lot of uh, perks and bonuses that you wouldn't get with a for-profit business. Um, one, you can have volunteers. Yeah. Yeah. Well, <laughs> and, and even that is changing too. They are kind of starting to poke their nose at that. I, I noticed that. Um, you know, the tax structure is different. It's that's really what it comes down to. It doesn't mean that it's like you said, gonna get, you know that they have to have their expenses and their um, and their profit equal. Um, it, it's it's just a different tax structure. <coughs> Excuse me. But. Yeah. I can see some people think, you know, and it just depends on, you know, what you are, what you, what your end game is, what you want the end, you know. Um. You know what I find ironic about it is some of the people in our movement that, that bellyache about medicine should never be taxed mm -hmm. are the same ones complaining that it shouldn't be nonprofit. Well, wait a minute here. <laughs> I mean. <laughs> well, and, and I think, uh the the idea of the nonprofits creates unnecessary burdens because it mm -hmm. yeah, there's certain true. requirements to qualify as a nonprofit that I think medical marijuana in many ways might be conflicted with from the get go before you've tried to define any sort of business model and, and I think that it's just an, another unnecessary obstruction to these industries yes. at the same time. The idea that if you're making a profit, you must be committing a crime has become a common talking point nationwide mm -hmm. everywhere that there's medical marijuana. Even if you're in compliance with the law, you will hear the media and law enforcement basically say, yes, but they were making a profit. Therefore, we arrested them. And, and Oregon specifically prevents you from making a profit on the sales of marijuana. We're one of the few states that has that sort of a clause. A lot mm -hmm. of them formally have dispensaries. A lot of them allow you to operate it as a business. You know, mm -hmm. it's it's just sort of a feeble attempt at making people think badly like you're these rich gangsters. Well, I, I think that's part of it, too, is kind of keeping that stigma alive. But, I, you know, I, I think just in, in general, um, there's there's this stigma against people who make a profit to begin with. Um, right. You, you know, and and, and if for you to make a profit, you must be doing something wrong. But to me, it's like, no, I'm asking for what I'm worth. Um, it, you know, and not all business practices are nice or fair, you know. But anyway, um, I, I think it's just silly to even even bother with it, to be honest with you, because it doesn't really change anything. It's just a tax structure. And, and it does put up some additional hurdles, but it also takes away some, too. Right, right. Well, and like I said, I don't think it actually takes away the concerns that most people think it's taking no, away. No, so it's, it's sort of like that common saying where people say it's a solution looking for a problem. It's not really solving what you think you're right. solving. Right. I think that's a great way to put it. It's, it's a solution looking for a problem. And it, it, it just seems like a waste of time, something to, to become a blowhard about. It really, I, I, when I read this, I went, really, really? You care that and much? And I have to wonder, you know, watching Oregon, watching the federal Congress, watching all of these different uh, municipalities struggling with balancing their budgets mm -hmm. and figuring out what they can afford to pay for and what they can't afford right. to pay for, that the California Senate has this much time to sit and decide, are they allowed to profit? Like, exactly. I, I want to know how much time they wasted on on saying well i think that, i think we're gonna always find and and you know i think even years after legalization we're gonna find that there's gonna be people who just flat out see this as a scourge just like there are many people who see alcohol as a scourge and it's not right. necessarily that they're vilifying the alcohol they're vilifying the people who use it definitely and it goes back and then, to those who still t attempt to legislate morality and, and then we have, you know, similar sort of pushback in Washington. And this one I find even more ironic because while <laughs> while California was the first medical marijuana state, it did, um, they did turn down their legalization uh, initiative in 2010, Prop 19. And there's been a lot of pushback, you know, in California since then. But Washington just legalized in the 2012 election. Mm -hmm. And in Washington, the Washington U.S. attorney in Spokane issued a cease and desist against a local medical marijuana farmer's market, which from what I understand, these farmer's markets have been going on for some time in Washington. It, this is not a new yeah. thing.
Long I time. think that this particular farmer's market might be new, but I'm not even clear on that. But the, the U.S. attorney, again, like we've got all this extra money and time, um, issued a cease and desist order against this farmer's market to stop it from opening up to sell medical marijuana. Meanwhile, uh, they're setting up the rules for how they're going to sell recreational marijuana. So <laughs> patients can't have their medicine, but but they're they're actively working to sell pot for recreational purposes. I think that this sort of shows the conflicts that are even still going on where they've chosen to legalize marijuana, and yet they're wasting their time fighting against patients having access. Well, and, uh, and these that, farmers' yeah. markets are structured very much like a food farmers' market, yeah. where you know everybody brings their their stuff, and it gives you the opportunity to mix and mingle and and get what you need. Right. They're very I, I social. A, they're very open. Um, you know, I appreciate uh, the atmosphere of them. I, in fact, I actually enjoy them over going to a dispensary, to be honest with you, because um, I get to talk to the people who actually produce the medicine. That's kind of nice. Um, I, I it just I, I don't know. I just like the atmosphere of them better. You, you know, you, everybody's there to check out everybody. It's just it's kind of nice. It, it's a shame that this is what they've decided to do. Again, like you, Jennifer, I don't I don't get it. It's, it doesn't make any sense. It's legal, so okay, sell it to everybody. I, I don't. It doesn't make any sense to me. I, I have not had a chance to go to any of these farmers markets, but I remember as as they were you know sort of sprouting up everywhere. Uh, part the pun that they were. Um, Facing some conflict, concerned about the uh, the backlash that they might get from law enforcement and others, you know, for having these events. But they've continued to push on with them throughout this entire campaign for legalizing marijuana. Uh, the the backlash in Washington against their medical marijuana program when they mm -hmm. had initially tried to put sales into place, and mm -hmm. and they got kind of left with some bad rules instead <laughs> you know Washington has been kind of charging forward getting pushed back charging forward getting pushed back and this shows that even when you you win the legalization argument the battle's not over that and there's still a long way to go there's still things that must change uh, there's another I get it the, oh, I'll go just, ahead I was just gonna add there's another concern that's going on right now and we've heard this echoed from Mark Kle Kleiman the uh, Washington pot czar mm -hmm. uh, is that with the medical uh, being unregulated as it is, and a lot of these these uh, shops running on a kind of ad hoc basis, mm -hmm. that those become now tax shelters from the rec for the recreational users mm -hmm. who don't want to have to pay the what's going to be a seventy five percent tax by the time it hits retail, and they worry that they're going to flood to and and of course Washington has naturopaths and and mm -hmm. uh, practitioners who can who Sign. can write, mm -hmm. so they fear a too. flood. Of, of people joining the rec the medical program to take advantage of the unregulated dispensaries mm -hmm. and the low and the no taxes that will have to be paid there right and and let me just say that if that is the case if that does take place that shows that it's overhanded in regulation mm -hmm. because in in a in in a, in a the more ideal market you're not going to need those outlets you're going to have valid legal appropriate methods of of doing this without having to be shady. Mm -hmm. Most people would prefer to be on the up and up, even if it's not as profitable. Right. Don't get me wrong. There's always some people who are going to look There's for always exceptions to that rule, There's yeah. But on the whole, people want the legal opportunity. So if you're fearing that your rules are going to make people skirt them, reconsider your rules. Apparently, you're not solving the problem that we were out to solve in the first place. Right, right. Well, that's our cue. <laughs> yeah, we we should oh, give we all of our. Um, oh. We we've got a couple of minutes, but we should give all of our our most recent information. We've had some changes to the network. Um, our, we've we've switched up how we're doing uh, our uploads. So I think everything has been moved over now. But there's a little bit of a new format to everything. Uh, Russ, right? Is that how? Is yes, there any we're on a WordPress uh, format now, and I'm going to have to show you how to use it so you can. Uh, make the changes to your posts, but you can get a different view now on uh, a podcast feed and on iTunes now. If you just go to 420radio.org, there is a tab right below the logo that says podcast. Click on that. You can find the links for a different view and for all the other shows on 420radio.org. And we still have our Twitter, ADB420. Follow us there. We're on Facebook at facebook.com. We're not very good tweeters. We don't we don't tweet don't a lot, so but but Not but so we're much. working on it. We're 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 developing, <laughs> and and I think uh, we still have all of our shows, you know, linked up there from 420 Radio, mm -hmm. like uh, mm -hmm. saying where you can 
listen to the previous episodes and then back here every Tuesday at 8 p.m. Pacific time. <laughs> all right. Well, I don't have much more to say. <laughs> I'm all done talking. Well, you just need to a different view. Let's go ahead and fade out with Cheap Green Bud. You could have been sucking in. I bet you'd do things my way now if you had to do it over again. You'd like to smoke weed, and you'd like it a lot. But you'd say fuck liquor, I'd rather smoke pot. It don't make me hungover, or act like a nash. You ought to give up drinking, start smoking grass. You ought to give up drinking, start smoking grass. Oh, 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 oh